Good morning and welcome to St. George's Episcopal Church in New Orleans, Louisiana. Thank you for joining us as we gather to celebrate the Holy Eucharist Rite II on this, the 19th Sunday after the Feast of the Holy and Undivided Trinity. Our service can be found in the Book of Common Prayer beginning on page 355. If you don't have a prayer book at home, you can go to bcponline.org and then use the menu system on the left-hand side of the screen to find Eucharistic services and then Rite II. We will greet one another in just a moment, but before we do, we are going to sing our opening hymn, All Creatures Who on Earth Do Dwell. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to His people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the lesson. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. The word of the Lord. Today's gradual is Psalm 96, verses 1 through 13, which can be found on page 725 in the Book of Common Prayer. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But it is the Lord who made the heavens. Oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence. Oh, the power and the splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations. The Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes. When he comes to judge the earth, he will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, Grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all of the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known. 
so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turn to God from idols to serve a true and living God and to wait for his son of heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. Please stand. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? And they answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. This story of the tax owed to Caesar, or in our uh, latter-day translations, uh, to the emperor, is, uh, as it says from the very outset, it is an entrapment that Jesus uh, is immediately aware of as soon as the question is asked, is it lawful? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor? And we still find ourselves in this particular Sunday lesson outside the courts of the temple in a mixed crowd of Pharisees, Sadducees, and those who are uh, associated with basic uh, uh, Judaism, but don't call uh, any particular in-group their own. And they're watching him to see how he will answer this, and not simply the Pharisees and the Herodians. The common, everyday people, the bread and butter folks of Jerusalem, want to know how Jesus is going to answer this because of a couple of different things. One must remember that Jerusalem is no stranger to rebellion by the time Jesus comes along. Part of the, if hatred is too strong of a word, part of the deep suspicion and brokenness of the society is that the Romans are an occupying force known for their total brutality and their willingness to overthrow the conventions, not only the religious conventions of Judaism, but the social order of the city and the surrounding countryside. Jesus comes into a friction uh, uh, with this knowledge at several points throughout his earthly ministry, but most notably in the last week of his life where uh, the high priest Caiaphas uh, prophesies uh, that it is fitting for one person to die for the sake of, of the city. And while we find in those words a sort of substitutionary atonement that Jesus is going to surrender his life so that we all may find richer life in God, Caiaphas is actually stating a pretty plain truth that everybody in the Sanhedrin would have recognized and known, namely, that if there is another rebellion in the city of Jerusalem, it's very likely that the Romans are going to come in and level the place. In fact, they did. In 69, 70 A.D., Jesus' own prophecies about the destruction of the temple come true. The city is besieged and the temple is leveled. And so part of the trap in this question about paying taxes is to put Jesus on the record in front of everyone of whether or not he is a rebel and a dangerous person. If he were to tell the people not to pay the taxes, he might become something like a local hero, like a Judas Maccabeus, standing up against not the Greeks this time, but the Romans, who in their occupation of Israel 
are known for wanton violence and to use the money that's collected in the tax against the very people that they are uh, living among. Jesus telling them, do not pay your taxes, would have been a call to revolution. And those people may have had their hearts warmed by this. Remember, they're expecting a Messiah that will be a prophet and a king of Jerusalem. This is the great confusion of Palm Sunday when he comes in riding on the back of a donkey and people begin to treat him as though he is going to be crowned either in the temple or in the palace. If they can trap him with this idea that he will say not to pay the tax, then he can be reported and then he can be denounced and then he can be punished. If he tells the people, yes, pay the tax, it's our civic duty, he will look for many of the same reasons. He will look like a stooge of the Roman government, somebody who is okay with this occupying force and the violence they inflict and the oppression that they bring, a yes man of the Roman government who's simply here as a mild prophet to keep the peace earning the condemnation of prophets before, who criticize when it said, peace, peace, but there is no peace. In this trap, the Pharisees and the Herodians have seemingly constructed a yes or no question. It must be answered positively or negatively, pay the tax or don't pay the tax, and whatever Jesus wants to answer yes or no, he is entrapped, and he cannot win. To their amazement, although we have perhaps heard this particular story uh, more than once or twice, to their amazement when they hear it for the first time, he goes over the simple dichotomy of yes and no and offers a much deeper truth about our responsibilities, uh, whether those are civic-minded or whether those responsibilities are to our God and to our faith. Render to Caesar, render to Tiberius Augustus Caesar, those things that are a part of his government and render to God the things that are a part of God's government. The distinction that we perhaps and ought to uh, treasure in this culture of a clear division between church and state is, of course, nowhere in the mind of an ancient Roman or an ancient Judean. The king or the leader is clearly in this position because they have some favor from God or uh, they are, in the case of Caesar, wrestling with God. But the idea that these would be two separate spheres of one's personal life is completely foreign. Our experience as Americans, our experience of that most of the time, clear distinction and responsibility, I think ought to lead into a richer discussion about what Jesus is getting at here. The question isn't whether to give the tax or not. For us today, and hopefully for the people that are listening to this lesson the first time 2,000 years ago before the temple court, the question is truly, what are those things that belong to the government or to the emperor, which we must give because we are participant in a society? And what then are those things that belong to God? I believe uh, an ancient Judean, if they were to do the calculus, would find that the, what's being asked for from the emperor is a coin a coin that represents one day's labor. We can give him that. What are we asked to give to God? And by the criticisms that Jesus offers, the observations that he makes throughout his earthly ministry, we can find that it seems as though for many, particularly the power players in this culture, what they are giving to God is incredibly deficient. God demands our worship. We owe him our love. We owe him our faithfulness. And at this time where people are under the covenant of the law, 
He is owed visitation to the temple. He's owed sacrifice. He's owed an almost insurmountable number of things. And looking out at the crowd, Jesus is most likely well aware that people are griping about whether or not to give a simple coin to the government and have more or less written God off to a significant degree, if not altogether. In our own culture, we can gripe about what the government wants from us or demands from us in the form of taxation. It's, I'm pretty good at doing that, in fact, um, quarterly uh, and then uh, majorly uh, in April every year. But I do know, and I hope that, that uh, others do as well, I do know that my taxes go to a number of different things, some of which I find problematic, others I find absolutely mission critical for a civil society. I render to the government the things are the government that are the government's because I benefit from the general picture of wealth in this society. If I can be okay with that and leave that part of the question aside, a richer question to ask today in our own time is what are God's things among us? What are God's desires for us? What does our God will from us? And are we truly giving him or giving him back those things? The parable, or rather the teaching of the coin, morphs into a gigantic question then of our responsibility as Christians, as followers of the way of Jesus and of, as worshipers of this living God. Are we being fair? and giving to him from the goodness he has given us. This question segues very easily, you may have guessed, into a talk about stewardship. And so I would leave you with perhaps what is at St. George's the most obvious and uh, probably most frequently thought of gift and experience that we have of God in a community fashion. What in the life of this parish church of St. George's, what have I experienced as something that belongs to God? Is it the gift of joy, the offer of inclusion in a community, the great benefit of having our lives hallowed and being able to share those moments with people that we love whether they are our natural family or the family that we have made in this place. And through that intentional act of recollection and movement into thanksgiving, how are we now as individuals and as a community going to render to God from that good that he has given us? I don't have a one-size-fits-all answer for that. But I do know, if you, you know, the view of the camera is certainly limited and we're not going to pan or tilt today. <clears throat> but consider the space that we are worshiping in. Consider whether you find them attractive or not. Consider the little plaques on almost every piece of furniture for people who have given to this church to great or to small degree, but have made this their spiritual home for really for eternity. The gifts that we give may not always yield a plaque or a memorial on the wall, but they are significant because it is a sign of our intentional act and decision to love God and to understand that the sign of that love and the reassurance of that love and the gift of that love was given us in this place, in his living temple on St. Charles Avenue I hope that as we consider what we owe to the world around us and what we owe to the God who made us, that that computation would figure into your understandings of your support for St. George's. As we go into stewardship, consider this question and think also about the way that this is going to be different and new in a time of pandemic. 
and how you can continue in old ways and in new creative ways to render to God the things that are God's. Amen. Our service this morning continues with the Nicene Creed found on page 358 in the prayer book. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are Form 3, found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. We will take a moment to compose our own thoughts and to give thanks uh, for the wonderful things in our lives and to pray for those who need it. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That they all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Of your charity, I ask your prayers for the following concerns and people for our seminarian, Lindsay Ardry, for the sick, Barbara Connaughton, Richard Wolbert, Jimmy Negrato, Shirley Cole Gowdy, Judith Fink, Ilsa Fink, Ruth Skirto, Isabel Oliver, Marva Mitchell, Marshall Monford, Deborah Dawes, Mary, Charles Jackson, Nancy DuPont, Bishop Charles Jenkins, Bishop Joe Doss, Stan MacArthur, James Pantera, Lee Wolgamuth, those affected by this summer's hurricanes. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to it the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Donna, back in the background. It's my pleasure uh, to greet you once again on this wonderful Sunday morning and to give you a couple of announcements for the good of the order before we go into the offertory. The first thing I have on my mind is that on November 1st, which is a Sunday, uh, we will keep All Saints Day. And that in St. George's and other places involves a reading of our parish role of remembrance or necrology. And uh, we w welcome your contributions to that. If you have a loved one who has passed on, whether it was during the course of this year or much earlier, uh, if you're still thinking about that person, please contribute their name by emailing it to our musician, Donna Clavijo, Donna at st george. Dot, uh, let me try that one again. Donna at stgeorge-nola.org. I've only been working here eight years. If you feel like it may be difficult to uh, pronounce a name off the top of somebody's head, you should offer us some pronunciation guidance so that we can get it right, and those names will be read at the uh, in-person service at 9.30, and they will be read again for the online service on that Sunday, November the 1st. There's a lot of information going out over our Wednesday email blast and other communications through our uh, MailChimp service. And I hope that you're signed up for that. And if you usually uh, perhaps look at the subject line and don't open the email at all, I know who you are. Um, I'm very thankful to see that our open rate for the, the kind of the closure activities that the church is offering on uh, David's and my ministry here are hitting about 50%. And I think that that is a good, good number. But if you have no idea what I'm talking about right now, you need to get onto our parish email list or you need to start reading those emails uh, because we, our last Sunday, is going to be October the 25th. And part of that is a farewell uh, a socially distanced farewell opportunity in the playground. And I want everybody, as many people as, as can, to know about it and to come as they are comfortable. There will be also a way to engage technologically over the internet if you are not comfortable showing up in person. Uh, so we, we aim to please, and I just want to be sure that, that you are aware of these things. The other announcement that I have is uh, simply to say uh, that the good work that St. George's does day after day in this community of Uptown is afforded by your generous contributions. Thank you for continuing to pay out your pledge in 2020. If you are a uh, person who desires to give, you'll see at the bottom of the screen is our giving portal. Put that web address in and you will find how you can make a pledge to the church or offer a one-time or repeating gift to support and sustain the ministries of this wonderful place. Thank you for your generosity. I can't think of any other announcements, so we will continue now with the offertory. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. <laughs> Receive, O Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, this spotless host, which I, thine unworthy servant, now offer unto thee, my God, the living and the true, for all my countless sins, wickedness, and neglect, and for those here present, as also for all the faithful in Christ, both quick and dead, 
that would set forth their salvation in mine unto life everlasting. Amen. O God, who didst lay the foundation of men's being in wonder and honor, and in greater wonder and honor didst renew the same, grant by this mystery of water and wine that he who is partaker of our humanity may make us joint heirs of his very Godhead, even Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. We offer unto thee, O Lord, the cup of salvation, beseeching thy mercy that it may ascend in the sight of thy divine majesty as a sweet-smelling savor for our salvation and that of the whole world. In a contrite heart and a humble spirit, let us be accepted of thee, O Lord, and so let our sacrifice be in thy sight this day, that it may be well-pleasing unto thee, O Lord, our God. Come, O thou sanctifier, almighty and everlasting God, and bless this sacrifice made ready for thy holy name. I will wash my hands in innocency, O Lord, and so will I go to thine altar, that I may show the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thine honor dwelleth. O shut not up my soul with the sinners, nor my life with the bloodthirsty, in whose hands is wickedness and their right hands full of gifts. But as for me, I will walk innocently. O be merciful unto me and deliver me. My foot standeth right. I will praise the Lord in the congregation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our service this morning continues with the great thanksgiving. Eucharistic Prayer A, found on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and beat on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our retiring hymn this morning is Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. Find 
in deeper reverence praise, in deeper reverence praise, in simple trust like theirs were heard beside the Syrian sea. Gracious calling of the Lord, let us like them without a word rise up and follow thee. Rise up and follow thee. Thy still dues of quietness. Till all our striving cease. Take from our souls the strain and stress, and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of thy peace. The beauty of Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.